And welcome to tonight's very special wedding episode of Life Support. Totally. That's right, because I'm delighted to say that tonight you're all invited to the national television wedding special starring our very own Sigourney and Dr Rudy. That's right, and I'm really quite excited to have the whole of Australia here with us tonight. And I'm thrilled you could be here to experience all the joy, romance and memories of my very special day. Yeah, and while we're all vibing up for Sigourney's maximum moment, we'll still be giving you all the dope on all the tricks and advice you need to know to help make your life just that little bit more bearable. And you never know, there could be a couple of surprises on the way. So, darling Doctor, I'll be ready and waiting for you at the end of the show. My dear, I'll be counting the segments. Well, then start counting, Dr Rudy, because here comes the first one. (laughs) Girls, don't you just love the beginnings of relationships? The loving, the talking, and most importantly, the presents. But sadly... After a couple of months, things can cool off slightly, and outside of birthdays and Christmas, the proliferation of presents doesn't persist. But I've found the perfect man who will always be willing to buy you whatever your heart desires on a continuing basis. Just find yourself a man who's an alcoholic. That's right, ladies. Alcoholics experience alcoholic remorse, which is a very powerful emotion. It ensures he's always heavily laden with guilt. And the best way for him to deal with that guilt is by making it up to you by buying you presents. Can I get you another drink, darling? Oh, no. No, I didn't. Yes. Last night when we got home, we had an argument and I just don't want to talk about it. That should be enough to eat away at him for the rest of the day. I am so sorry for what happened. I only hope these can make it up to you. Oh, Oliver, I love it. And I still love you. I love you too. I really do. And it will never happen again, I promise. I know. Uh, Now, can I get you a drink? You look exhausted. Yeah, I'd love one. Isn't it beautiful? Matches the earrings he gave me last week. And that's all there is to it. But I should warn you that not all alcoholics are violent, but almost all suffer from blackouts. So if you have the misfortune of teaming up with a happy drunk, simply act all distant and quiet the morning after. And when he asks you what's wrong, just tell him he hit you. He'll have no recollection of whether he did or didn't. So there you go, girls. Just find yourself an alcoholic who suffers from the guilt that gives gifts and you've found yourself the perfect partner to provide you with perpetual presents. Oh, good day. No one should be scared of going to the doctor, but occasionally things can go a little skew if downstairs and you can get a little worried. Now, I've got no problem with people looking at me as God intended, but I'm not sure if I want a stranger actually touching my tender toolkit. Sometimes, though, you need medical attention, and there has to be another way. Well, thank Todd there is. This is Jerome. Jerome is an exotic dancer. He loves getting his gear off for a price and does so at the drop of a hat. So all I'm going to do is paint the relevant information the doctors need onto Jerome's tackle to help the medical fraternity tackle my problem. Now, it's important to get the colours of your condition just right so when the doctor examines your standing, he'll give an accurate diagnosis. 
Now, I just sit back and wait for my private dancer to come home with the goods. See you, mate. Oh. It's okay. Nothing serious. Just apply twice daily to affected area. Yeah, cool. So there you have it. If getting fondled by a fella freaks you out, take a tip from Todd and paint a paid professional for a hands-free prescription. One of the curses of this modern age is that us chicks have lost the simple art of the free dinner. Because of all this equality crap, men now expect us to pay half the bill and they still expect sex at the end of it. It's just 25 bucks each. Now, I know you've been conned into thinking that today sharing the bill's the normal deal, but you're forgetting one of the oldest tricks in the book. You've just got to readjust your reasoning for modern times. The good old-fashioned runner. It's been used forever by people and groups to avoid paying the bill. These days, it's every girl for herself. I'm not ripping off the restaurant. He'll pay the bill. I'm just reinstating some civilised dating rituals. Fight the power! The two most important words any woman will ever say are, I do, which is why she should practice saying them as much as possible. It's important to remember the dates aren't therapy. He's paying for your dinner. You're not paying him to sit there while you burden him with your thoughts and ideas. People say, don't judge a book by its cover. But we all know that everyone does. So it's important to make sure that your cover attracts the right sorts of people. I guess I just want the best for all women. The problem is, most women don't know what's best for them. So many women are obsessed with their careers, which leaves an open field for us modern women to snare all the good men. I don't hate anyone, except Hillary Clinton. I think she really let Bill down. It's pretty sad when a 22-year-old intern has to cover for you. Size doesn't matter. As a modern woman, you need to learn to believe that. You know, people are always telling me I'm a disgrace to women. Fortunately, I only care what men think. Coffee to go, please. Sure, would you like a cappuccino, latte, flat white, long black? A long black, thank you. Long black it is then. Do you take sugar? One, thank you. Sure. And are you having anything else with that today? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. It's a beautiful day out there today, isn't it? Yes, quite. Yeah, it's always such a bummer having to work on a day like today. Are you working today? Yes. Yeah. On a day like today, I reckon you should be either at the beach or in a beer garden or something like Don't that. Don't you hate this? All you want to do is conduct a simple transaction quickly and the shop attendant bombard you with inane small talk. Come in here every day and make coffee. You could, of course, simply ignore her. But people might get the wrong impression and think that you're rude and arrogant. It's a living. <laughs> there you go. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. But don't worry. There is a way to ensure the small talk is kept to a minimum whenever you're dealing with someone in the service industry. All you need is one of these electronic voice boxes, like the one used by Stephen Hawking. Simply type in what you want and let this little device do the talking for you. Good morning. What can I get you? Coffee black and one. Right. As soon as she hears this, she'll feel uncomfortable and won't ask any more questions, leaving you free of servant small talk. It's also perfect for taxis and hairdressers. There you go. That's all there is to it. Use the hawking advantage and enjoy the advantage of being disadvantaged. Bye now. Oh. 
Todd, mate. Scored another ladder from the site today. Where can I put it? I'll put it in the kitchen next to the wheelbarrow. No more room, mate. Yeah, right. Oh, good day. If you're a single bloke living with a mate, it doesn't take long for your place to fill up with all sorts of junk. Sometimes the simplest solution is to upgrade to a nicer place with more room in a better suburb. But a couple of single blokes with single blokes habits and all the tools that come with us might make a landlord think twice about letting us loose in his valuable property. But tonight, I'm going to show you how to pass your tenant's application with flying colours and to give the landlord the peace of mind that you'll keep his investment property in tip-top shape. That's right, all you have to do is pretend to be a gay couple. Thanks to TV shows like The Block and Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, gay men are universally known for their anal tidiness and careful interior design sensibilities. So all you and your mate have to do is dress as though you're male models, stand close together and talk about your vision for the room. Hey, where do you reckon we should put our statue of David? The landlord will quickly jump to the conclusion that you're both gay, without either of you having to perform any homosexual acts. Enjoy, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. Then, once you've got the keys to your new pad, it's time to relax and move in your belongings. So now, you've got all the space in the world to put all your tools and stuff. And when the landlord catches on that you're not gay, well, he can't really complain because that's discrimination. So, take a tip from Todd. You and your mates can trade up to a better tenancy by pretending to be gay. Ciao. Well, Sigourney, it's only taken you three years and three series, but you finally got your man. I know, Penny. And to think that my perfect prince had been right by my side for all this time. Yeah. So, well, like, I would have thought Dr Rudy was the kind of guy who would have taken you back home for something as important as his wedding. Yes, we talked about it and agreed that we'd much rather be here with you and Todd, our television family. Really? What did his rails think of that? I don't know, he didn't say. Oh, well, what did they say to you? I mean, you and his mum must get on like a house on. Yes, I assume we would, but I don't know, Penny. I've never really spoken to her. Um, not to either of his parents, actually. Uh, Sigourney, as a close colleague, can I just ask, how much do you actually know about your perfect prince? What do you mean? Well, I know Dr Rudy appears to be the perfect partner for you in every way, but... There's starting to be a little too much mystery for my liking. Oh, Penny, I think you'll find that in real life, not everyone is perfect. And not every male mystery can be explained away. If you're always looking for the worst in a man, you're sure to find it. Hey, if you're cool with it, I'm cool with it. Oh, I am, Penny, but thank you for your concern. Just watching your back, Siggy. But for now, let's watch this. really has to be one of the most passion-killing inventions ever. If you're like me, you know that this kind of fumbling foreplay really murders the magic of the moment. <sighs> but with all the STDs around today, the use of the condom is pretty much unavoidable. Wouldn't it be the bomb if guys who were guaranteed to be clean just had it written on their foreheads? Then you could go ahead and enjoy a bit of bareback bonking without the risk of disease. Well, it just so happens that there is a group of people out there who are guaranteed to be STD free. Today, I'm going to show you how to find them. Sexually transmitted diseases are by definition transferred through sex. So, if you find someone who hasn't had sex before, they're going to be STD free. That's why I'm here at this Dungeons and Dragons night. There's an unwritten law of nature that says to play Dungeons and Dragons, you have to be a virgin. These are young males in their sexual prime who've never had sex before in their entire lives. Not out of choice, but out of lack of opportunity. OK, so you might be thinking, well, I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. But that's what every other girl who's ever met them has thought. It just further guarantees their virginity. What they lack in experience, they'll make up for with their keenness. And they'll treat you like the silver princess. Um, I think I'll take this one. See ya. Yeah, g'day. 
As a working man, I build up a serious appetite during the day. Unfortunately, every time my lady friend goes on a diet, she puts me on one too. So if your woman is holding out on your three squares a day, I'm going to show you how you can get all you can eat whenever you want. Just go out to your fuse box and flick over your circuit breaker. Then go back inside to your lady friend and tell her there's been a blackout. Sweetheart, you all right? There's been a blackout. Oh no, the food in the freezer is going to be ruined. Oh dear, I didn't think of that. Well, I have to eat it, I suppose. Do you mind? Well, it's got to be done. OK, I'll cook it up. And that's all there is to it. If you want to bust out of a diet, simply stage your own blackout. And soon, you'll be feasting on a freezer load of food in a really romantic setting. Top. Any modern woman will know how hard it is to tell if your latest hottie is the catch of the century or just another pretty face who's absolutely broke. You can't ask and you can't tell by looks or where he takes you on a date because even the most penniless bloke will scratch together enough loose change to impress you if he thinks he might get some sex. But there is a way to assess his income and it's so easy. The first part is telling him what most men want to hear, that you're not even interested in getting married. So, as I was saying, I can't think of one good reason why anyone would want to get married in this day and age. Oh yeah, I know. Why would you? <laughs> or even engaged. <laughs> He's now in his comfort dream zone. A woman who doesn't want to get married. <laughs> now for the coup de grace. Yeah, it's all so silly, antiquated and pointless. Not to mention a con. <laughs> Take engagement rings. Do you know, the rule of thumb for a stupid engagement ring is that it should cost the equivalent of three months of the man's pay. Three months pay? <laughs> There's no way I'd be spending $75,000 on a ring. Bingo. I know, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Here, let me freshen that up for you. And there you have it. He's earning $25,000 a month, which means he's right within my price range. Time to make sure he has something he does like to spend money on. Me. How's it? Tonight I want to give all you manly men out there some wise advice about male bonding. It's not just about going to the pub or the rugby with your colleagues and getting drunk. It can be a much richer experience. It's all about talking and listening. Really talking and really listening. It's something women do with each other every day. And in 2003, it's something we men should be doing too. The next time you meet a friend, take the opportunity to sit down and have a heart to heart with each other. Really open up. Talk about your hopes, your feelings, and most importantly, your relationships. What problems is your mate having with his girlfriend? What does his girlfriend want? What does he feel he isn't getting? So Michelle feels you're not attentive to her in bed and that you don't treat her like she's smart. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't know. Uh, I feel like all she thinks about is herself. This way you get to learn what your friend isn't giving to his girlfriend. Then you can give it to her when his back is turned. She wants you to do what? I wouldn't do that either. It doesn't sound very hygienic. So when they start to open up, you should start taking notes and you'll be having sex with their woman before you know it. All right, so you've just betrayed a friend, but they should know better than to start squawking about their feelings and relationships like a bloody woman, and this will teach them to keep their trap shut so you can both enjoy the rugby. Bye now. So, how's Michelle looking these days? If you're like me, you don't mind a nice cold beer. But it can get pretty exy if you're into having a couple of coldies every hour though. So, how do you cut down on the cost of your beer? Well, simple. Home brewing. Home brew is cheap as. Trouble is, home brew also sucks. That's why the brewery's never gone out of business. But the good thing about home brew is, you can control how much alcohol's in it. 
And most importantly, you can control the other ingredients as well. Now, this is the important bit. Just add a healthy slurp of chloroform. Then, just invite your mates over for an afternoon piss up. You see, people never arrive empty handed for a piss up. Oh, just put them down over there. I've got a new home brew I want you to try. There we go. Everyone hates home brew, but these guys will each have at least one glass just to do the right thing, thinking then they'll move on to the beer they brought. Cheers. Home brew does the trick every time. Oi, come on, wake up. Party's over. Time to go home. See ya. Thanks to the chloroform, They'll have headaches so huge, they'll think they went through all their beer and then some. So I've just picked up two lots of top-notch beer and all for the price of some cheap home brew. Cheers. See ya. Oh, good day. You know, when it comes to betting women, We've all heard of some blokes who subscribe to a simple theory. If you just go up to a woman and ask her straight out to sleep with you, you might get rejected 99 times out of 100, but you will get lucky eventually. The thing that stops most blokes from trying this simple approach is a terrible fear of rejection and public humiliation. So that's why I've devised some simple rejection insurance. Let me show you. Hey. You know, I really think that you and I should just go somewhere quiet and do what comes naturally. What? Oh, sorry, did you think I was talking to you? I was talking to my girlfriend. No, little lady, that was just somebody in the bar. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realise... Don't even worry about it. Anyway, love, gotta go. Bye. See that? No harm done. You escape with your dignity intact and you can keep going until you get the right response. How about you and I just cut to the chase, get naked and get busy? Yeah, right. Well, I tell you what, folks, I can't believe it, but here we are at the end of another special episode and the end of another series. As good a reason as any to get married. And I must say, my darling, you look absolutely breathtaking. <laughs> oh, Dr. Reedy. If any man can show any just cause why Sigourney and Dr. Rudy may not lawfully be joined together in matrimony, let him now speak or hereafter forever hold his peace. Very well then. Dr. Rudy, do you promise to keep Sigourney in a manner to which she will become accustomed? I most certainly do. And Sigourney... You promise to totally obey Dr. Rudy for as long as you both shall live? I do. Then by the power vested in me... How's I... it? Holy shit! How's it? Dr. Rudy here again. Jeez, he hasn't got anyone with him, has he? Oh, my. <gasps> That's right. I'm afraid you've all been duped by this fraudulent physician. The letter sender! That's right. And I really can't believe you've all been taken in by this imposter. Imposter? I dare you. What are you playing at, Mac? This... Uzbekistanian usurper has been on the run from Woomera for the past year. He's just another uppity Uzbeki trying to attack my job. Ah, really? This is just too much. Now, I believe you're standing in my place. But I believe it's me she loves. And I believe it's me. That's me. May begin again. Oh, Dr. Rudy, I do love you. But are you really you? Yeah, right. This could go on for a while. And we've run out of time for this series. Yeah, yeah right. right. Good night, Australia. Now, let's have this up. I'm going to kick your ass right here. Yeah, really? What? Sick of it? I'm sick of it. I'm kicking your ass. I'm kicking your ass. Who are you? You imposter. <laughs>